Okay, Ocean State running here at Van Cortland Park. The day before the Manhattan Invitational, we have Jim Doyle of Bishop Hendrickson and Danny Brennan of Bishop Hendrickson. Guys, I wanted to talk to you guys about coming to this meet, coming to this um, iconic story park, uh, which has had so many uh, races over its long history. Now, Jim, I know you have a lot of history behind this. Uh, I was just talking to you coming here back in 1969 to see Bobby run, uh, your, your brother Bobby run for uh, Texas El Paso. Um, why don't you guys, I, first of all, I want to talk to you guys about coming here. Uh, Jim, let, let's talk, talk with you first. Uh, coming here to Van Cortland Park, it must mean a lot to you coming here. Oh, it does. I mean, it, when you think about it, you know, it's probably, the, it is the largest uh, cross country meet in the nation. Uh, how well you do here, you know, the biggest teams around usually end up being here. So it's a measurement of, you know, how well, you know, your team is doing. So we look forward to being here and competing against the best teams. That's what this park draws the best teams here. And, and, and the course itself is a, kind of a mystique. You know, it's, you know, a tough course. It's a challenging course, two and a half miles. It's a different distance. You know, you, it's different than, than other courses. So. Yeah, I just walked it. it. It does seem very difficult. <laughs> Uh, Dan, how long have you been coming here? So I, I started coming here the first year, maybe in 1993, when I was in sixth grade and my dad was coaching at Hendrickson. Uh, he would take me out of school uh, and I would take a half day and come along and watch the madness and hang in the, the van with the other guys on the team and saw what it was all about. And I came here from, raced here from 96 to 99. Uh, my cousin Betsy will never let me live down the fact that I skipped her wedding uh, to come to this meet in 1998. Um, and then 99, I was uh, here racing. And then I went to school uh, at Iona College in New Rochelle, which is right down the road. Right. So I've been coming to this meet almost every single year since then. And I've been back coaching at Hendrickson since 05. It is awesome. I was trying to tell the boys how special it is. Uh, the mecca of cross country in the Northeast, I'd say. Um, it, it really is a special place, and I love coming back every year. Yeah, and Jim, why don't you talk about the first year you were here, um, back in 1969, uh, a, a special occasion. It, it was, you know, uh, first of all, my grandmother had passed away, and we had come here to tell Bob, you know, that after the race. But his team was also an you know, unbelievable team that he was on. Kerry Pierce was on his team. Kerry Pierce was a world record holder in the two-miler at the time. Uh, he had Peter Romano, uh, the team was loaded. I think Bob was probably the fourth man on the team, uh, but everybody had to come through, you know. And, uh, it was a, a big day for them. They ended up well, that was the national championship, right? Yeah, national, NCAA. Championship, yeah. national NCAA championship here, and you know, I, I was in awe of the course, and uh, I came here. I remember being at the cow pasture, and I mean, it was a completely different course then, it was full of rocks. And, Today, as you see it, it's, you know, it's all a well-groomed course. That's the way the course was back in those days. And actually back when I first started in 1984, that's the way the course was. It was a tough course to, to navigate. But, uh, and uh, Jerry Lingram ended up winning that day. And the guy that was second was a guy from Air Force. And did was uh, Prefontaine. And uh, that was the only time that he ever lost a collegiate meet. He had beaten Jerry Lingram, I believe, two weeks earlier in their conference meet. They were ready, so yeah, it was a special day for the team. They actually ended up staying in a place that used to be called the Van Cortland Park Motel. It's all one down now. But, uh, we never even want to think of staying there, but that's where the team stayed that year. And, uh, it was quite an accomplishment for Bobby. He came through big for them, and, and the team came through. You know, later on in his life, uh, him and those guys were put in the University of Texas El Paso Hall of Fame for their accomplishments that day. So, in fact, it was funny how things evolved. I mean, I I wasn't running at the time, but I was wearing an old trench coat. I was at the finish line. And, uh, Jeff Johnson, who was a photographer and who was one of the people that was behind the beginnings of Nike, was taking pictures. He took a picture at the starting at the finish line. I was happy to be caught in the background, leaning over with a cigarette in my mouth. <laughs> my uh, Elvis, uh, <laughs> and later on they ran a story, and I believe it was, might have been one of the old running magazines, Where is Jerry Lingram Now? And there yeah, I right. was, leaning over this blue New York City police barrier, my cigarette, looking at the race, right? <laughs> you know, in 19, 
know, when the story came out in like 83 or 84, uh, you know, I was like 148 pounds. I became a distance runner. And uh, now I've evolved back to where I was in 84, but uh, and guys were looking. I said, hey, can you guys find me in the picture? Nobody could identify me. <laughs> I'm trying to, I even asked Jeff Johnson for that picture, but nobody's been able to. But that it was in that magazine that time. It might have been in, the story might have ran in track and field news. And maybe that's why I can't find it. But, but it was a great story <laughs> where you know, Jerry had gone out to Hawaii. And, you know, and Jerry was such a great runner in his own right. So that's so, a little bit of my history behind this whole thing. So, Jim, then coming here with uh, St. Raphael Academy. Um, you guys actually won, right? Did you guys win one year? Yeah, we won in uh, 88 when we had the great team. We won then. And then what they did is they would have, you know, like they still do, the A, B, C, D, E, and F. And, you know, his dad, uh, I believe they probably won. Yeah, and so in 85, yeah, they won the watches. What they would do is they would have six or seven letter races, and you'd win your letter race, and then the fastest team average yeah, right. would win the watches. Uh, so you won them in 88, right? We and then, technically won them again. Well, you, yeah, 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 yeah. And then Hendrick won them in 85, and then in 2002, Hendrick won them again, uh, but they didn't get the watches that day because it was before any type of digitalized timing. The old rec, uh, results they used to have, they used to just put them on poster board here, uh, and a team from New Jersey got the watches, even though Beef had everything all written had it out. All, I said, we won this. And, they, and it took and then until the, indoor track, the middle right. of the indoor track, where they handed over the water. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And, that, and I went over and I said something. And I said, you guys, are, you coaches are all the same. And I was telling this guy. <laughs> I said, we won. Yeah. And he got the, the, the meat director said, you guys are all the same. You just don't can us up. He said, no, no, no. I we won. Those guys were out of here. Like, real quick. They yeah. knew that we had won. <laughs> congratulated us. And then later on, uh, we so they apologized to us and said, oh, no, you guys really did win. And then in, and then in uh, about 2007, 2008, they changed the format to the Eastern States, which they currently have. They always had it for girls. Then they changed it over for boys, where you could uh, enter into that race, and that was kind of the hot race of the day. And we were lucky enough in uh, 2011, we finished maybe about fourth or fifth, and they gave us this big drying trophy for fourth or fifth. But in 2018, uh, we were we were lucky enough to win the Eastern States race uh, when we had that great season in 2018. So uh, it's a pretty awesome race, pretty great day overall. Freshman races, sophomore races, JV races, you know, loads of people, lo loads of people looking to talk talk cross country as well. Special day. Yeah, I think the following year LaSalle, right? One in 2019. Yep, and then LaSalle won as well in 2019. Yep. So I mean, Rhode Island teams have had a pretty good amount of success here. You know, given you know the size of our state. We're four flash. Yeah. And fourth last year, that's right. So we're going to fast forward to, to, to tomorrow. Um, what, what are you guys looking at uh, as far as your team? As far as I'm concerned, you guys are right now, hands down, the best team in the state. Um, how about here? What, what, what are you We'd thinking? Like to be, you know, our goal is to be in the top five here. You know, that would be a great goal if we could accomplish that. I think they yeah, great. yeah, there, there, there's a lot of good teams from the Northeast here. You know, New Jersey, obviously, is well represented. You have, you know, the number two in the country, CBA, that's here. And, you know, they're a powerhouse, they're a great program. Um, you have New Jersey, you have the good New York schools. Um, there's uh, uh, St. Anthony's in New York that always comes here and knows this course very well That's and races right. it well. Um, I don't think Union Catholic's going to be here, but I know the New Jersey teams and, and even Pennsylvania teams, LaSalle College, yeah. I believe they won, it, they won it last year. Uh, they're back, you know, they have another really strong team. Um, so we're looking to be in the top five. Uh, we're looking to do our best, you know. Uh, Troy Sylvester was 12.52 last year. So, you know, I, I set a goal of probably under 12.40. And Keegan was close last year, but if Keegan can drag Fraser and him to go under right. 13 minutes, it, it's not inconceivable that we could have three guys under 13. That would set us up pretty well. You know, we need everybody to have a good day, and that's what it would take. We have, we think our team is better than last year's team. So, yeah, but, but saying something and doing something, as you know, to get a go out there and do it. Absolutely. And tomorrow and do it. You know, it's going to be competitive. There are more teams that are in this race than last year, so yeah. it's going to be competitive. And, about ten, about ten more teams than last year. Yeah, yeah. Outstanding individuals as well that aren't running a full team. 
Uh, so it'll be it'll be really interesting around 2:30 around here tomorrow. Yeah, and speaking of Troy's second, right at Manchester, yeah. um, which is a very tough course, yeah. and he was able to break 16 minutes there. Yeah, he's, he's been running well. He ran. We ran. You know, we, we were disappointed last week that we weren't, we weren't able to run in North Carolina. So we came back and we, and we said, well, we got to run a hot run. We decided to run our dual meet fairly hot. You know, Troy ran well. He ran 15:44 there. And uh, Fraser and, and Turner were both under 16 minutes and got a block. You know, it's a little bit short, just like, you know, the uh, Ocean State is a little bit short. It's about the same distance, about 305. And, but they still ran well. And, you know, the other guys on the team, all ran well. They had it was a good, nine, was nine good, guys good under 17 minutes. It was a good confidence race as well. Absolutely. It was also a good confidence race uh, that, that Pilgrim, you know, went right there with us, you yeah. know, and, and they, they pushed us hard through that, you know, first mile plus, and those guys ran a great race. So I was happy to yeah. see those guys running well. They have a good little team right now going. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, uh, how about the other teams? Let's sound. We got, Hen I mean, uh, St. Rainfield Academy with Devin Kipiego is actually, yeah, I Devin. think he's going for that course record tomorrow and looks pretty well. strong. I wish him well. I spoke with Chris last night. I actually, you know, I forwarded him this map with, and I broke down, you know, the thousand meter segments on this thing. He knows, you know, so, you know, we spoke a lot about, you know, what it would take. You know, I, I believe he has to be definitely at 3,000 minutes in nine minutes to at least have an attempt. He knows where, where that mark is. He yeah. typically stands up there. You know, it's uh, just before Way the deep in the woods before the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. So he's going to be there, and then he's got this last 1,000 here. And, I mean, if anybody can navigate the last 800 meters, he can. You know, yeah, you know absolutely. He moves up. So but it's, it's supposed to be a good day, the temperature-wise and weather-wise. So he has, you know, there's no wind. He has, you know. I think he's going to have to have a little somebody pushing him, at least uh, the first part of his course. I mean, he, if he can break it open with a thousand to go, then he has a chance of correct. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, uh, I'm going to let you go, but thanks for talking with me today. Yeah, no I'll see you tomorrow, Thank but you. good luck tomorrow. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. Take, Take care. it easy. Yeah, we'll see you.